without this drug, my life isn't enough to distract from the numbness and void. Hey yo YouTube, what's going on? Junior here. Back again with another reaction video, back again with another viewer request. As you can probably tell, today we're doing a Nightwish song. I put this video in the background because this is really the only Nightwish song that I listen to a lot. It's with, they had their, their old singer. I know they have a different one now. The whole aesthetic, the symphonic metal, the gothic elements, of course, they're all things that I would be uh, super into. Nightwish has always been a band that's kind of been in the back of my mind is one that I can always listen to and have a good time. But uh, when they got the new singer, I, I don't know, like I never really felt motivated to keep up with anything that they were doing. I kind of had moved on to Camelot as my symphonic metal band of choice. But then they got a new singer as well and then I don't and now I don't follow them either <laughs> anymore. So I still like the sound and I still like the aesthetic so I'm sure I'll have a great time. The song we're doing today is called Ghost Love Score as recommended by Dobel Dropper and Gerbil Grub. They've asked me to react to the live 2013 Vakken Festival performance, which I have right here. So that's what we're gonna do. Of course, everybody following their example, leave your suggestions in the comments down below and the next video could be yours. That's pretty exciting, hey? I'd love to go to this festival someday, or just any big European metal festival. Oh, cool. They got like... <laughs> the, uh, it's like the logo in flames. Oh, man, I'm so big again. Hold on, guys. Sheesh. Chill out. Now. Not that important. Here we go. This is a bit more Man, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, look at those keys. Those pipes. There we go. I know a lot of metal is dominated by just being as abrasive and as harsh as possible and a lot of the vocalists just try to like absolutely destroy just every aspect of the song in a, in a good way of course right you, you know even the music I've been listening to recently black metal the whole point is to sound as awful as possible not really but you know that's that's an aspect of it to some degree and I enjoy that but there's something to be said about just beautiful soaring female vocals over a metal track that uh, is just such a unique aesthetic that I feel like you can't get with anything else, you know? Sure, you could have really talented female vocalists singing in, you know, they're all they're all over pop music and, you know, singer-songwriter stuff, whatever, and they're pretty good, and, you know, you get some good female rock vocalists as well, but there's something special and just it, it, at least in my opinion, and completely unique and different about female-fronted metal bands where they have this whole, like, just operatic presence. You know, you, you find a lot in symphonic metal especially. Just give me those kind of chills right now, you know? You feel me, boys? Girls? I don't know if any girls are watching. I don't know, like, probably not, but, you know, you feel me? It's just, um, it's just a good sound. Yeah, sorry, I don't, I'm, I'm kind of just, like, speechless right now. We'll just keep listening to the song for a little bit. Oh. 
And the instrumentation just supports it so well. Look at these drums, man. Look at this pose. Man, it would be so cool to experience this in concert, live, like the, I, the atmosphere must just be electric right now. You know, as I was kind of saying during the little pause, the instrumentation is, is great. <laughs> I love the drummer's pose. It's nothing overly complex or technical because obviously right now the vocals are taking center stage as they should be. Let's take a little look at the lyrics for a second. We used to swim the same moonlight waters, oceans away from the wakeful day. Scent of the sea before the waking of the world brings me to thee into blue memory. A siren from the deep came to me, sang my name, my longing. Still I write my songs about that dream of mine, worth everything I may ever be. And then the chorus as well saying, my fall will be for you, my love will be in you. My first impression is that it's just a very tender, heart-rending love song of some sort. I love the, the opening line, especially just saying, we used to swim the same moonlight waters, it evokes such a vivid image and just a feeling as well, you know? It's romantic, it's nostalgic, it kind of has that sense of rebellion, a bit of taboo being out at night, but it's also that great just gothic imagery of a black lake with the moon shining down and being the only illumination. I don't know if any of you guys have ever gone swimming in a lake just at night with just like the moon and the stars, but it's, it's a crazy experience, especially if you go under and it's just complete pitch blackness. But the water's so warm because it's like summer or whatever. And then you come up and all you see is just kind of the moonlight reflections over the rippling water. That's, uh, I don't know, it's just, uh, maybe just for me, it, uh, it brings back such, I don't know, such good memories and such a very vivid one as well. So maybe that's why it speaks to you so much. I also like the line here of saying, a siren from the deep came to me, sang my name, my longing. Still, I write my songs about that dream of mine worth everything I might ever be. The siren from Greek mythology, seductress of the ocean, <laughs> of the deep, that tries to lure sailors to their death by singing to them. So there is some sort of siren singing her name, trying to draw her to the edge, to her end. And so she writes songs about this dream she had about, I guess this past, this person from her past. Yeah, I mean, just overall, just a beautiful aesthetic. Let's keep going. Yeah, there we go. There's also metal concerts are just so unique in general, right? They're completely different from it. Just everything. Look at how happy and peaceful everybody is.
Oh, cool. Oh. Oh. Man, okay, so that bridge like had almost like a folky influence going on there. Just the way that the melody and the chord progression was going, I guess. It really reminded me of folk, folk, uh, not like not like Bob Dylan folk music, but like you know what I mean, like like folk metal, like uh, old, like super old medieval kind of vibes going on. You know, vibe switch up. You know, she's not doing the very operatic floaty airy vocals anymore it's a bit more belty and uh, grounded i guess lyrics saying bring me home or leave me be my love in the dark heart of the night i have lost the path before me the one behind will lead me again the one behind will lead me could be referring to how she's i guess reminiscing about this person from her past and how that experience will I guess, continue to drive her forwards in her life because she seems to have lost the path before her and lost her love in the dark heart of the night. So maybe she's wandering lost and the only solid thing she has to hold on to or to look back on is this one experience she had with a person way back in the day. Even though they're not there anymore, if something, whatever happened, that's what she continues to guide her forwards in life. I mean, I don't really know if that's the best way to deal with things or to go forward in life. I'm not talking about this specific song. I'm just in general speaking from like life experiences or whatever. Say for the sake of example, it's some sort of romantic experience in your past that you can't seem to let go of. And that's the only thing you focus on. And that's the only thing that kind of drives you going forward. I don't know if that's necessarily the healthiest way to live about your life. Now, obviously, it's sometimes it's hard to forget about those past experiences and how much they meant to you or how much they did affect your life. And that's fine. I think having it affect your life is fine as long as it's not the sole driving force behind it as well. You know, we're all an accumulation of our past experiences, good and bad, but as much as it hurts and as, as addicting as it can be, you shouldn't let bad experiences be the only thing that defines you. I don't know, that's, that's, I don't want to get too deep into that. That's my, that's my little spiel on this subject, okay? That's enough of that. Enough, nobody wants to hear me say something, talk about stuff like that, okay? Calm down, Junior, all right? Chill out. So still kind of a folky influence, but a much harsher delivery there. Yeah, cool. Some vocal versatility getting shown here. Not just a one trick pony after all. Not that I ever thought that, of course. She's obviously a very talented vocalist and front, front woman for this band. But it's just cool to kind of hear that grit enter the, uh, the voice there for a little bit. <laughs> oh.
I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I feel like the atmosphere and just experience of a metal show is so much different than any other kind of music. I don't know. I haven't been to tons of concerts, and I imagine maybe it's it could be the same for whatever your favorite artist is, but I think there's just something so raw and visceral. There's something special about metal, says the guy with the long hair that listens almost exclusively to metal. <laughs> but I think there's some merit to that statement, you know? You watch live performances of a lot of modern artists, pop culture icons, you could say, and while some of them do have that kind of electric presence michael jackson for example prince great pop performers even you know rock guns and roses back in the day aerosmith now but take something like uh hmm, the super bowl before halftime performance yesterday it's a um let's just say it's a bit of a different feeling it's a it's a tad bit more uh, manufactured and maybe you say oh well it's the super bowl halftime performance you know yeah but i don't know i just don't feel the same when i watch it it's that simple you know, maybe I don't have, I don't have to justify it to anybody. I'm just telling you what I think. Yeah, I'm sure everybody has kind of a unique experience about concerts and what they enjoy live and what, what kind of evokes great emotion in them when they watch a musical performance. For me, metal is just a whole other animal. <laughs> Back to the operatic vocals here. Oh. And then back to belting. <laughs> I like how this ending guitar like sounds like classical, classic rock rock, you know? <laughs> Cool. Alright, so that was Nightwish Ghost Love Score, live version. Now I'm kind of remembering why I was so obsessed with symphonic metal back in the day. And why I'm, I am still obsessed with female fronted metal bands. <laughs> and why I'm so obsessed with metal in general. This whole experience made me really reflect about my experience as a metalhead and um, why I gravitate towards it as opposed to any other genre of music. You know, I still listen to every other genre of music that I can. And I, and I really mean that, like literally every kind of music that I can get my hands on, I'm, I'm trying to listen to if I can. And I typically can enjoy, but there's something that always brings me back to metal. And I don't know if I can really quantify it with words. And I think I'd probably just do it injustice if I attempted to. I think it's just that feeling that if you know what I'm talking about, then you, you know what, you probably know. And that's all I really need to say on the subject. As far as the individual song goes, I mean, it's great. The performance was amazing. The vocals were, were really good as well. The instrumentation, everything just kind of came together in a very cohesive, soaring, epic package. It almost seemed like a movie score for a couple moments there. I like how the 
the dynamics flowed between different styles. Yeah, I always kept it really interesting. Of course I enjoyed the song, of course. What's not to enjoy? I can't imagine anybody not enjoying this song. 1.4 thousand dislikes. That's that's awful. I don't know who I don't like who does that, you know? Anyways, that'll be it for me today, guys. There's not really much else I can say on this on the topic. I had a great time listening to this song. I just wanted something nice and easy and something I knew that I would enjoy. So I, that's why I picked Nightwish, okay? Fight me. But if you decide not to fight me, instead, make sure to like the video if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you liked me. I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow probably. And um, yeah, that's, that's it, you know? Gino out. I'm gonna go listen, I'm gonna listen to more Nightwish. <laughs>